In this video, we show some of the final testing of the ChemCam instrument before installation on the rover. All spacecraft instruments must survive two major tests before they're pronounced ready for flight. One is a thermal test, usually performed in a vacuum chamber to also simulate the lower pressures. ChemCam was installed in this large white chamber with a window for the laser beam. We had to wear goggles to protect our eyes whenever the window was unblocked and the instrument was on. Data from the instrument was monitored on the computer screen to the side of the chamber. ChemCam was operated at various temperatures, both hot and cold, as shown by this chart. We installed our samples in another chamber that was kept at Mars pressure, with a mirror in between the two to direct the laser beam. The sample chamber has a turret, so we can load in a number of samples. Here you can see samples being unloaded and stored after a successful set of analyses. We involved a number of members of our team in these tests, both French and U.S. personnel, and included people from educational institutions. In terms of samples, we analyzed a large number of rock powders that were pressed into small disks. You can see how the laser punches holes in them. The second major test for the spacecraft instruments is a vibration or shake test. During launch and landing, the payload experiences some rough handling, including a lot of vibration. Typically, the test is performed on an apparatus that resembles a huge audio system speaker mounted vertically. Vibrations are produced by the speaker at all different frequencies in a controlled pattern. Tiny accelerometers are installed at various locations to monitor for any changes especially if something were to break. The part of ChemCam that's being tested here is called the body unit because it sits down inside the rover. It doesn't contain the laser, but rather it has the electronics that control the instrument and the sensors that detect the light from the sparks to give us our rock composition data. After the instrument is firmly bolted on and the accelerometers are installed, we stand back to watch the test. These vibrations look very benign in the video, and that's a very good thing. If you actually saw part of the instrument wobbling during the test, it would be flagged as a failure. If anything, you'll only see some very minuscule vibrations. Here, you can see our test director, Jim Lake, monitoring the data as we ramp down from the most severe part of the test. Fortunately, everything looks okay. The test is done in three different orientations to impart vibrations in all three axes of the instrument. After one axis is finished, we go on to the next. On the final day before we delivered ChemCam to the rover, we checked it out one more time in our clean room. Here you can see the mast unit, the part of the instrument that contains the laser, seen as a cylindrical object to the left of the electronics box. The cover was removed from the telescope. On top, you can see a circular high-efficiency filter to keep Mars dust out of the optics. The telescope is 4 inches, 110 millimeters in diameter, and contains a finely polished parabolic mirror. This is the largest optic ever sent to the Martian surface. After focusing the telescope, we prepared to fire the laser at a final target. In this test, we use a beautiful large crystal of iron pyrite, otherwise known as fool's gold. The laser beam itself is invisible, but when it hits the sample, it produces a ball of plasma, creating a sparkling sound and illuminating the surroundings. The spot the laser hits is about the size of a pinhead, but the plasma reacts with a larger area, oxidizing and darkening it. First, we command the laser at a low frequency, and then we run it at 10 shots per second. The results show a plethora of emission lines from the iron due to iron's large number of electrons and the energy levels they occupy. It clearly identifies iron, as well as other minor elements and their abundance. The spectra cover three wavelength ranges. The visible and near-infrared range, roughly corresponding to what our eyes can see, a violet portion, and the ultraviolet. When the test was finished, ChemCam was transported to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where it was installed on the Curiosity rover.